Hey guys, welcome back. So according to inside sources that have personally reached out to contact me via email, thank you very much for reaching out, Meghan and Harry have basically told Netflix producers to pretty much F off and that the work will be done on their time frame. Now, this is an inside leak, so allegedly this is what happened. Does it surprise you? Does it surprise me? Not in the least. I'm not surprised at all because I personally believe that Meghan and Harry are all about the glamour. They're all about the appraisal and their recognition and they are not about the hard graft and the hard work. So we are all aware that they signed a hundred million dollar Netflix deals and Spotify deals in order to their keep in order to be free of their royal duties. They stepped down as senior royals and they basically decided to pursue a life in the limelight without the constrictions and the restraints of the royal firm. And of course, they believed that the British public were against them from the start and that they had an insidious anti Meghan and Harry narrative running over here in the UK that they just could not contend with. They also felt as though their children were basically vulnerable to security breaches and that their lives would be at risk if they resided and stayed in the UK. All of which is unfounded. I don't believe it's particularly true. I don't think that their children are exposed to any more risk than any other celebrity child or royal child. And basically they left. Now they have gotten to a point whereby now the chips are on the table and they have work to do. They pretty much do not want to do it. They don't want to cough it up. They don't want to inconvenience themselves by helping people out in a humanitarian personal capacity because that's not what they're about. They want to live life in the easy lane. They want to coast along and they have taken Netflix advances, but they are refusing to repay them with the content that they promised. So they told the producers to F off. They have told management to F off and that they have the power and the profile to expose them if they put them under any undue stress or pressure. Meghan and Harry are tyrants, let's face it. They're walking, breathing, living tyrants. And this hell that they have created is of their own making. They think that because they have the royal seal or at least the royal association, they are able to treat people and talk to people any old which way they feel like when the mood takes them. Let me get back into this article, which doesn't go into specific detail as I have received, but it basically gives you the general gist and idea of what has happened. They have work to do and they don't want to do it. They are out of their depth. They're way out of their league with this one. And swearing at the producers is not exactly going to help their cause. So I'm going to get into it. This is by The Express, and then I'm also going to refer to my private email. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex quit their royal duties two years ago and moved to the US where they reside with their two children. Harry and Meghan have pursued other career paths, including philanthropic work and signing deals with streaming giants Netflix and Spotify. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex announced their deal with Netflix in September 2020, but they are yet to produce any content for the platform. While the exact details of the deal have not been disclosed, several reports have suggested it could be worth in excess of 100 million pounds or dollars. The couple also signed a major deal with Spotify worth 18 million pounds, but their partnerships yielded no content for the streaming platform in 2021. Since signing the deal, Meghan and Harry have produced just one 35-minute holiday special podcast episode featuring high-profile names including Elton John and James Corden. Paula McLaren, a co-author of Royal Fever, the British monarchy in consumer culture, claims that the Duke and Duchess may be in over their heads and have overextended themselves when it came to signing the deals. She claims that as Harry and Meghan work across a number of different projects, it's hard to see where their focus lies. The consumer expert notes that producing high quality content can take an unprecedented amount of time 
to create. However, she adds that the couple's failure to produce content has resulted in a level of doubt in the couple's ability to deliver content at the level and quality required by both separate platforms. Miss McLaren, who is a professor of marketing and consumer research in the School of Management at Royal Holloway, told Express it does seem that Harry and Meghan may have overextended themselves in terms of the Netflix and Spotify deals. Although, of course, we have to recognise that producing content does not just happen overnight and high quality programmes will take many months and years to generate. However, they do seem to be involved in so much at the present, building a media empire with insufficient foundations that it's hard to see where their focus really lies. And that's true. There was this source, or at least this article that sprung up about all of these different trademarks and business names that Meghan and Harry were trademarking over in Silicon Valley and various other parts of America. And it just seems a bit weird. They're also struggling to trademark their Archwell Foundation brand in America, and they just can't seem to get that together either. The stress and the pressure of actually doing what regular people do who do not live on free handouts seems to be getting the better of them and I personally believe it has resulted in them raging at the Netflix producers and Netflix management because who are they? I mean they don't want to be dictated to they have a strong sense of you know self-importance and narcissistic tendencies because of who they are and the fact that they are associated with the royal family. They gave this disrespect and this foul attitude to the royal firm and now they are doing it to others and we are now all getting to see just what they're made of. Not only that, it seems as though their deals and all of their projects that they have been involved in thus far are not flourishing. Meghan Markle's bench book is being shifted for a total of one dollar. Yes, I put one pound on the video but it's pretty much the same thing, give or take 20 pence, right? So it's been shifted for one dollar over in the United States of America as I've seen on social media today because People just are not, <laughs> they're not interested. They're not interested in her. They're not interested in him. All they want to see is that they are served their just desserts and that Meghan and Harry basically have to look at their actions and that they are forced to look in the mirror and realise that they were in the wrong the whole entire time. I personally would like to see Meghan and Harry as an act of retribution come back to the UK and serve as senior royals for a short period of time. Not that I personally like them, not that I personally feel as though they deserve the British public's forgiveness, but I think that's the only way they can really dig their self out of this hole that they find themselves in. If they do not get it together and if they do not uh, fulfill these Netflix and Spotify contracts, they're pretty much dead in the water, they're screwed. And we all know it, everything that they have, they're already complaining about the mansion because of this pongy odour that's apparently wafting over the land. They're going to have to give it all up and their relationships with those in Hollywood is not really going to flourish unless they're really about something and they, they can prove that they are about something and that they are still very much royal which Kate is demonstrating so eloquently. She's doing a fabulous job. She's looking fabulous. She's walking fabulous. She's talking fabulous. She's dressing fabulously. And she's just excelling. She's going from strength to strength. And I think that the tyranny of Harry and Meghan was the very thing that Kate needed to wake her up out of her slumber. During the time that she was in the royal firm, Kate really wasn't that active. She really didn't say much or do much. And people said that. They said, where, where is she, the Invisible Duchess? All she seems to do is be locked away and she doesn't talk. That's all changed. She's done a complete U-turn and it's something that we all needed to see and we didn't realise how much we was missing out on how fabulous she is, how queenly she is, how ready she is to take the throne. So I'm excited about Kate's growth. She's had a tremendous amount of growth and it's fabulous to witness it like a swan, okay? Growing from an, a little duckling to a big swan. Megan, on the other hand, of course, it's not getting better for her and I doubt very much if it will improve. So this lady has also said, I'm sure it could. It really depends on what Netflix and Spotify executives think and whether they consider 
there has been a failure to deliver. Perhaps they are willing to wait for higher quality productions. However, I imagine they will be wondering if the couple have overextended themselves or if the content is coming at all. With Meghan and Harry, they do everything on their own time. And I personally feel as though it was a waste of money. Uh, they definitely wasn't worth the $100 million investment. I think more like a $20 million investment, even that's too much. Uh, probably a $10 million investment for them to prove themselves. I think if you give someone that amount of money who hasn't even proven themselves, who couldn't even serve as a senior royal, which is not really that high pressured, how can you really expect great content from people who lack experience and who are very self-involved? I'll be back with another one. Bye guys.